Well, 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 guys. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you guys, wherever it may be. You know, usually, um, I don't really get into politics that much, but uh, recently there's a guy uh, known as uh, uh, Imam of Peace on Twitter who has been going in hard on our president, Mohamed Buhari. And he is definitely speaking the minds of all Nigerians, okay? I tell you that, you know, because Nigerians, we are cowards, you know, sometimes. We are more than 200 million people, and yet we can't even defend ourselves against these hoodhead vagabonds known as leaders. Currently, Buari is nowhere to be found. You know, uh, this has been going on for a long time. You know, this guy has not even addressed the nation yet. And, uh, you know, it makes things even worse uh, to realize that a uh, foreigner, of course, uh, is, has seen this and is definitely had to talk to speak and uh, address this issue. Well, let's, of course, take a look at it right here. He just recently made a video about it. Since he's been going out on Buari uh, since yesterday, he's been going out on him. So let's, of course, watch his latest, uh, you know, clip where he actually, like, expressed and the 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 bigotry you know uh, of our so-called uh, leader and of course is uh, uh, the kabaz as well there and of course his supporters so-called uh, bubu lovers let's of course watch this and of course uh, he will take on it guys wherever you are i hope everyone is doing well and just checking the sound just checking the sound yep Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I hope everyone is doing well. Having a lovely weekend. So I thought I'd make a live uh, stream just to address what's been happening. Uh, many people are asking me what's going on with uh, the president uh, of Nigeria or more specifically his office. Um, so I'll just start from the very beginning. What I do on Twitter, for those who are uh, new to my page, what I do on Twitter is I share news I find relevant. I provide my own comments regarding events that happen around the world. I do that through facts, history, and many of the times humor. I don't give terrorists a break at all. Every terrorist gets their fair share of lashing from me online. Um, many people might agree with my method, many people might not. The point is, I come from a family that has suffered because of these terrorists. My countries, Iran and Iraq, have suffered from enough terrorism. And therefore, this has shaped who I am in my writings, in my speeches, in my tweets. Terrorists don't get a break from me. So recently, I've been focusing on the Christian persecution in Nigeria. And I have been very critical of... Boko Haram and their ability to gather influence and recruit people. And so clearly the point I was trying to make is that the government needs to tighten the rules and regulations that govern the North and the South. And I began speaking about these issues from a independent perspective. I don't represent the government. I don't uh, have anything to do with any government. I'm just a, an author. I'm an ordained cleric. And I travel around the world. I get invited now and then to parliaments to give advice. So I am somewhat involved in the scene. And also with such a, a uh, you know, I don't want to say a very large following, but a decent following, people have an expectation from me to give my voice to the voiceless, to people who need it. So as I'm criticizing Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab and the terrorists in Africa, 
I felt a pushback coming from, not from the terrorists, coming from the supporters of Buhari. So I was very surprised. I said, this Buhari, he comes to the West and he seeks foreign aid funding, claiming that he will deal with the terrorists in Africa, yet his supporters and his, vote, his voters, his main voter base, are online and they're defending the terrorists. And by the way, when I say his supporters, I don't mean just random people. No, no, no. People from his office. People from his office. People connected to the presidency of Nigeria. Defending terrorists online. And this is not something happening on the moon or in Jupiter. This is happening here online. You can go to their pages. And I'll start mentioning some names in a bit. So when I began exposing these people and exposing the failure in the government of Nigeria, the clowns who work in the office of the president, you know what they did? They went to our previous communication. Of course, I speak to governments. I speak to uh, people. I speak to diplomats. People approach me and sometimes I approach them. And there was this one time where there was clashes between the Nigerian government and Zak Zaki. Now, I'm against Zak Zaki. Everybody who, who knows me knows I am against Iran. I am against the regime in Iran. I am against Hezbollah. I am against Zak Zaki. I am against all militants. I don't like them. I'm against them. And in these conversations between me and people who work for Buhari, the president, it clearly states what my position is in any case. So there was conflict going on. And I, you know, saw that these guys, the people who work for Buhari, following me, unfollowing me, following me, unfollowing me, following me, unfollowing me on Twitter. So I thought perhaps they're trying to get my attention. Maybe I could help. I'm a man of peace. I am there. I'm happy to lend a voice and be there for anyone who likes peace and who wants to establish peace. So basically, they started to... Yes, I coughed. I'm okay. I just had, uh, you know, warm water. In any case, let's go back to our topic. We were discussing how to achieve peace in Nigeria, and they're sitting next to the president, sending me pictures. They're sending me pictures of the president without him knowing. <laughs> Maybe they should get fired for it. I don't know. I don't know. Does the president know his people are sitting there next to him, snapping pictures of him, sending them to me? In any case, so these guys, <laughs> so these guys, they, they don't have anything to say to me. I exposed them. I exposed their links to terrorists. I exposed their presidency enabling terrorism. They couldn't do anything. So what they did, they released all of our chat logs, all the chats, everything that we had. Like, why would you do that? That's against diplomacy. Now, people around the world, when they look at the office of the president of Buhari, they see he can't be trusted. This guy can't be trusted. The moment you disagree with him, they start releasing your, your, your messages. The moment you disagree with him, they go crazy. They start releasing everything. Like, why would you do that? Anyway, so people now read the messages between me and people who work for President Buhari. And they saw that I did the right thing. I, I had no evil intentions. All of our communications was perfect, legal, excellent, and within proper diplomatic standards. There was nothing wrong with it. I am there offering peace, methods to achieve peace. Uh, we're talking about negotiations. And then 
they try to frame it as though I am seeking an audience with Buhari. Who the hell is Buhari? Nobody knows Buhari outside Nigeria. Who is Buhari? If he walks in America, nobody will even know who he is. If he walks in anywhere in Los Angeles or Nigeria, or sorry, in uh, New York, no one will know who he is. Nobody knows who he is. I am seeking an audience with him. Who is he? He's a nobody. He is a nobody on the international level. When talking in international uh, diplomacy, he's a nobody. He has no power. He doesn't have any influence, not on the United Nations, not on America, not on the UK, not on any country. He's a nothing. Because of his actions and his weak leadership, nobody cares about him. You can't even control your own country. You think people are going to care about you when you travel? I'm talking real talk. I'm not here playing politics with you. Who cares about Buhari? Even now, many people watching, they don't even know who Buhari is. People who are in Africa know Buhari. In any case, what I'm trying to say is, why is the office of the president attacking me for attacking Boko Haram? Don't you say that, <laughs> that if you, that you are against terrorists and you have a measure to tackle terrorism. <laughs> and then when I criticize terrorists, you attack me? Why don't you attack Boko Haram? Boko Haram is next to you. Go attack them. Why are you attacking me on the other side of the world? What's wrong with you? In any case, the point is, <laughs> you're making me laugh. <laughs> These guys who are online, Bashir and the other fool. These guys, why did Buhari hire them? He hired them so they can say yes to him. Everything he says, they say yes, yes, yes. They don't give advice. They don't give opinion. They have nothing to say, only yes. Whatever Buhari says, they say, yes, sir, yes, sir. And they kiss his hand and polish his shoes. That's their job. They have nothing more to do except this. If they don't say yes, and if they don't polish his shoes, and they don't make him feel good, and if they give their own opinions, they get fired. They get fired, and the whole of Nigeria knows this. These people online, from the office of the president, they are nothing but shoe polishers. They polish shoes so that the president feels good about himself. Dumb and dumber. And they're lying. They're lying big time about me. Big time. Because they have no power, they have no influence. They don't even have a following. People in Nigeria don't even know them. I don't know, people who work for the president, so vocal, who claim to control media and social media and the office of the presidency, nobody knows them in Nigeria. Who is Bashir? Nobody. He won't even get a visa to travel to Somalia. Who is this guy? And they expect me to talk to him? So what if he works for the president? In any case, man, these guys, they think they have power. You know, and then this other guy, I don't know who he is, he came, the ver verified one, who said, Imam Tawhidi, why are you uh, criticizing the people who voted for Buhari? Why criticize them? What do you mean, why criticize them? I, I'm allowed to criticize the freedom of speech. And then he said, but Buhari was democratically elected. If it's a democracy, why are people being butchered? If it's a democracy, why are people being put in prison? If it's a democracy, why are Christians being slaughtered every single day? Why? If it's a democracy, it's not a democracy, it's a sham. And the president is a fake, and he's a phony, and everybody around him, they're illiterates and dumb people. This is why I call him the dumbest president on the face of the earth. Everybody around him is dumb, and he can't tell that people around him are dumb. Minister for National Security. Whoever's in charge of national security, uh, the home affairs, foreign ministry, all of them, all of them, dumbest people you'll ever find. Boko Haram is next door to you, slaughtering Christians. But I guess, you know, when I talk, they see my turban, they say, oh, you must be with Zek Zeki. I'm not with Zek Zeki. Who the hell is Zek Zeki? I have no respect for Zek Zeki or for anyone tied to the Iranian regime. I am against them. I am against them. I have nothing to do with any of these guys. Who is Zek Zeki? 
you guys. Zekzeki is a big deal in Nigeria. He's not a big deal where I am. He's a nobody. Yeah, I need to drink some water. Yeah. Anyway, so this tribe, the, the Fulani tribe, you know, the, the complete tolerance towards Christian persecution and the butchering of people who don't agree to Buhari, who is responsible for this? Who? Who is responsible? I don't know. You as a president, what's your job? What is your job as a president? What's your job? To go travel around the world and take pictures? What's your job? Kiss babies? Or is your job to fight these terrorists and make your country safer? What are the statistics for female genital mutilation? What are the statistics? Come, come tell us about your economy. Tell us about the people who are starving. And you're sitting there, you're funding Bashir and his other uh, puppies to come and sanitize your image online. Doesn't work, doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You're a president. You're supposed to care about the people, the nation, and the security of the nation. You don't sit silent when Boko Haram is butchering Christians. Why? Because they come from your tribe. That's one issue many people don't know. How many people from the Islamic extremists in Africa come from your tribe, Mr. Buhari, and the people around you? You are ridiculous. You're foolish. Today, today, we will have a hashtag trending, and it's Buhari resign. Everyone, I want you to make Buhari resign number one on Twitter. Give him no break. <laughs> Give him no break whatsoever. Whatsoever. Yesterday was President Kovic and Imam. Today we need to make Buhari resign trend on Twitter. So he sees it and he feels it. So he does action. He takes action against the terrorists. And he takes action against the Islamists who are butchering Nigerians. Just because they're Christian, just because he disagrees with them, just because they're not Muslims. I swear to God, if a Christian pastor called for the killing of Muslims in Nigeria, Buhari would be there the first day to fight him. But because the Christians are being butchered, Buhari, no way to be found. No way to be found. So you, you Bashir and this other fool, you are defending your president, you're, you're lying about me to defend your president? Where is your president? Do you even know where he is? He don't even know where he is. Maybe you should go find him first and then defend him. Maybe because he's no longer alive. If he's alive, then maybe you can get paid. If he's dead, you're not going to get paid for defending him. <laughs> okay, my friends. I love you. Take care. <laughs> and don't cough. <laughs> okay, my friends. Take care. I love you all. We'll keep you updated, but yeah, keep the pressure, keep, keep the pressure, don't stop, do not stop. Buhari resigned today, I want it number one for the whole day, for the whole day. And let them look, they will lie, they will photoshop, they will fabricate, fine, do what you like. Point is, let the international world see that you guys want this crook to resign. Thank you very much, goodbye. Well, this was um, a well-structured statement from uh, Imam Tawidi, also known as, uh, popularly known as Imam of Peace, you know. I have to say that I never knew who this guy was, you know what I mean? I never, I've never heard of him before. You know, this is the first time, purely, I've, like, I've heard of him. I think I started hearing of him uh, yesterday, since yesterday, so someone sent me a link of you know he's a uh, ash worse to our president uh, Muhammad Buhari and uh, of course um, I was like okay who is this guy where's it from I did my research as well and I found out that he's originally from uh, Iran from Iran uh, 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 but of course reside based in uh, in uh, Australia you know he's an outspoken guy you know he's a guy that don't support terrorism is a guy that uh, fight for the for the voiceless and all the stuff and after what I've seen okay listen those guys said nothing but facts facts that we Nigerians we are cowards okay I said we are cowards I said again we are cowards because 
how can the use of Nigeria allow a thousand people, a couple of thousand people, like overrun them? And also, what he said um, about uh, Buhari's tribe, Fulani, as men, all those stuff, bro. I mean, this is what a lot of every Nigerian knows. You know, every every Nigerian from the southern part of Nigeria, from Lagos to uh, Edo, from Edo to Anambra to Rivers to Cross River to bro to everywhere in the south. Okay, everybody will know that the Fulani Esme are doing damages. In fact, uh, my mom can't even go to farm anymore due to the, 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 the flooding estimate uh, uh, problem and all the stuff, the, the situation going on right there now. And Buhari has never taken any action towards Fulani Esme because, of course, they are, they are his people. And this is what I say, Nigeria is a forced marriage until you, of course, uh, restructure the nation, of course, make everybody important. That is, that's why you see me. I'm a Nigerian, Peter Nigerian. That's why in on this channel, I always make sure that I include every Nigerian, regardless of where you're from. You know what I mean? I include Nigerian because I don't believe in, uh, you know, I'm this, I'm Igbo, I'm Yoruba, I'm this, I'm that, bro. At the end of the day, we are all one people. We are all the same, but we do have different ideology. Because if you look at where I'm from, you know, the south side compared to the north side, we are just two different people. In terms of how we think, how we reason, and how we do things, we from the south mainly like diplomacy, and we of course want to learn more, and of course acquire education and other stuff. The northern part of the country not really like that; they don't like Western education. So I don't even know why Fred uh, Lugard, what's his name again, Fred Lugard and his wife, you know, uh, decided to do what they did, all because of greed, and of course, use Nigeria as a cash cow. But we are one already; like we are, we're in the same country now. But the thing is, there are some group of set of people that just want to stay on power forever. And uh, a few days ago, I came across a tweet of uh, what's his name again, Gimba Gim, Gimba Kenyanda. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think he's from the north side. From the north side, who is who is saying that uh, Buhari must be protected at all cost because um, uh, if he dies, if anything happened to him, you know there are lots of vultures who are looking to take power, and he was call basically calling the vice president Osibajo uh, a vulture because the guy is from the south and of course a Christian in a way. A thing is, I don't believe in all this religious stuff. Mm, I don't believe in that. I just believe religion was a tool to divide, you know, people, and also, of course, is successfully divided people. I just believe the religion of love, love one another, love your neighbor as yourself, love everyone, you know, appreciate everyone, unite, you know, fight bad things off together. Because Nigeria can be the greatest country or one of the greatest country in the world. We have the ability, we have the capability, we have the minds. But because of the deep-rooted tribalism and of course deep-rooted religious, you know, uh, you know, um, religious divide, you know, that stuff is gonna take maybe a thousand years to even accomplish. Will Nigeria ever survive this coronavirus stuff? I don't know if we will survive the coronavirus stuff. And if Nigeria happens to like, like if and if there happen to be a, a recession in the country, I believe the country will divide. Do I want to see Nigeria divide? No, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Like, uh, you know, Bosnia said, uh, like, I, I keep it real. I don't want to see it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it has to be done at some point. Because you can't keep having people who don't, you know, who don't care about you and who are, of course, uh, tribalistic in nature, who don't want nothing good uh, to come out from your, from your power, who have done everything possible to subdue you, to make sure you don't grow. And yet you grow, but. There are things that needs to get done, and they don't do it. They share the money, and of course, I just also heard that uh, Nigerian senators ordered 400 uh, plus uh, exotic cars, you know, about 50,000 plus. Whereby we don't even have enough ventilators in Nigeria. We only have less than 400 ventilators in Nigeria. New York City alone has 16k, and it's still not enough. And we Niger we don't have. We we don't even have enough. We don't even have up to one hundred letters for two hundred million plus people. Can't you see that the country is going is going down the drain? Can't you see when people say, "Oh, the country is useless"? I don't really argue with them, but I don't support you know um, a foreigner. I don't usually support foreigner like insulting our president and all this stuff. People are always saying, people are saying, "Oh, the guy is insulting Nigeria, not insulting the president." Listen, 
The guy loves Nigerians, okay? He's just saying what every Nigerian that is going through hardship and, of course, not benefiting. Listen, I've never benefited shit from the Nigerian government. You see? I've never benefited shit from from the Nigerian government. My dad ne neither, my mom neither. Like no, I mean there are millions of people like that, and I've benefited a lot from the German government. You see, I've benefited a lot from the European and German government more than my government. That should tell you that. Listen, in as much as I'm a Nigerian, I have to speak the truth, and I have to give thanks to. Um, Imam of peace, Imam Tawidi. This guy is an unspoken guy. Yeah, some people might find it uh, annoying and other stuff. But believe me, 99% of Nigerians, uh, of course, think this way. Some of them are just scared to come out of the woodwork and express themselves because they are afraid their families will be targeted. Because what they do, what they do in Nigeria right now, especially those uh, people in power, when you talk, they find a way to subdue you. They, they call DSS for you. Just like look what happened to Omoyele Shawori how he's been prevented from even taking power how he's been like uh, tortured you know how he's been arrested how he's been like maltreated you know how he's been like the, they want to you know do, to to make sure the guy you know uh uh go back to us and continue to live his normal life but the guy is not going to do that anytime because the guy he's a pagerian so he wants to fight for the nation and also, Nigerian youths are selling their votes. You know, I heard they sold their votes to uh, and other stuff. I heard what I heard, but I'm not saying all of them did, but most of them did. How can you say you vote 5,000 Naira? What will it get you? What is 5,000 Naira? It's crazy. Like, the country needs a re restructure, and I don't know. The nut is way, way behind, uh, you know, in terms of education and, of course, civilization and other stuff. It, the nut is way behind because the nut just to believe in your old um, Islamic way of life, which is not bad, but at the same time, you look at countries like uh, like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, you know, you know, United Arab Emirates. Those guys are making this happen. They are like they are developing their nation. You know, they are making their nation a better place to live, to work, to do things. You know, and those people are the one that brought you the, the religion. But yet, they are progressing while you are digressing. This is why I always say, Africans always, uh, especially Nigerians, will always, you know, like, we, when something gets introduced to us, we, some of us will just take it as if we are the one that created it. Just the same way in churches in Nigeria. You go everywhere and you see churches in Nigeria. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to church or something. But people are using this as business right now, man. And it's crazy. You know? Like, you have pastors who have private jets, and yet you as a member, you don't have shit. You're still struggling to survive on one daily meal and all those stuff. So, this is what I say. The mentality is just backward, and as a Pagerian, that's why I always mingle with Pagerians. I don't mingle with Nigerians, I mingle with Pagerians. All of my friends, 99% of them are Pagerians, patriotic Nigerians. Whether they were born in Nigeria, they were born outside Nigeria, they were born anywhere they were born at. They are Pagerians. Those ones are the ones that will change the nation. Those ones are few number. They're just a couple of thousands. But we are the ones that will change the nation. You know, if given a chance, one of us right, one of us is there right now. Amoyelesha will be fighting to make sure that that country, you know, gets to the top, absolute top. But if the country will even survive recession again, I don't know. Uh, you know, the coronavirus issue is just like going on right now. And I think this might be the one. Of, listen, in as much as. We don't like the virus. We know it's dangerous, but this this is like a revenge to the Nigerian politicians. All of most of them are getting right now. Most of them are even in self isolation, hiding and all this stuff. And I just heard that Buhari is not Nigerian. Like what the hell? Person that just not Nigerian and he's never just Nigerian. I heard he's in the UK. You know, admitted into a hospital. I think also is well uh, is a uh, uh, the chief of staff as well. His colleague uh, uh, Yatari is also there, bro. Waiting, I use my ISC for embassy for Niger for Nigeria embassy for 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 Berlin. Waiting, I use my ISC. What I saw there with my own eyes and what my experience, you know, illustrate is that listen, Nigeria is not United. It's not United nation. It's a tribalistic country with tribalistic people. With some people that think because they are this tribe or this tribe, they think they are both the others. If you think that way, then share the goddamn country. Let everybody go its way. You know, 
But with the sherry, no, because they know we from the south, that's what they get, they get what they get from. After the oil dries up, what's going to happen? Then they'll say, oh, let's go away. Then I think we're better regardless because we don't have to depend on oil to survive. You know? Germany doesn't depend on any natural system to survive. America doesn't depend on that. Most of the West, the developed countries don't depend on resources to survive. You know? Nigeria has that market. Nigeria has the, those brains. Nigeria has those vibrant, you know, youths. But yet we keep electing all these old head vagabonds that want nothing but an absolute disaster situation for us. Anyway, guys, I will stop for this. Thanks to Imam of Peace for, of course, addressing this. Uh, I know I really, really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to be following him though. I'm going to be following what you have to say about Nigeria. You know, it's very, very good. And I'm telling you right now, even the the president's office, they're like angry with him now and all stuff. But yet, this guy keeping it real. He doesn't give a shit about nobody, man. <laughs> you know, man? He's just keeping it real. So I like this guy though. So for those of you guys who are watching, like the video, share, subscribe, and stay blessed. And of course, go follow Imam of Peace if you want something real. If you want unbiasedness, if you want someone who's gonna speak your mind, in fact, I'm even ashamed to say that that a foreigner like care more, care more about cares more uh, for the people for the uh, you know an ordinary Nigerians than the Nigerians themselves, because we have some middle class people who don't even care as long as they they get uh, they get money monthly from the government and other stuff. You know they do their stuff. All this kuro kuro stuff that they do. You know, it's just crazy, man. Thanks to Imam Face for this exciting, of course, interesting uh, video. Stay blessed, guys. Cheers.